So I, I took a look at your YouTube channel. Okay. Listen, it, listen. There's a lot of things that goes on to that. I really do feel like Ellie, honestly, is the queen of Toontown at this very moment. But once they get too big, eventually they can't do that as, anymore as often as they want to. If you had to place me in one of the four houses, because I, I know what I am, I've taken the test. Where would you put me at? Hello, welcome everybody to Casual Conversations with my guest Sylvan. They are primarily a Toontown streamer, but have been known to play games like Lethal Company, Phasmophobia, and Pirate 101. At 171 followers, they are steadily climbing in the Toontown community. Sylvan, thank you so much for being on the stream today. Stream? Recording? Eh, it's all the same thing at the end of the day. Um, my first question to you. For those of you who know your content, they may be very shocked to see you on a webcam right now. And I have to ask yeah. you about your avatar and your character, the rabbit. Tell me about that. Where did that come from? <laughs> Well, like you said, I started playing a lot more Toontown when I started streaming. Um, actually, no. I started streaming actually a lot longer than that. However, it was on and off, very, very on and off. And I started streaming more on Toontown after a certain event happened in my life. And then I realized I really like just how the My Rabbit looks on TTR. So I decided, you know what? Let's make that into an actual persona. And I'm just a rabbit ripped out of Toontown playing different games and they don't know what the hell they're doing. And I feel like that would be a good way to do it. Yeah, so you created your Twitch account April 17th, 2016. You streamed a little bit in December 2020 and a little bit into that January. You took a multi-year break. And then you started your current like serious run. It looks like in about October 2023. Does that kind of track with your, your Twitch history, do yes. you think? Yes, that actually is like a very good record of how I, how my streaming was it's awesome okay so the next question i have for you we covered the avatar let's talk about the name for a second sylvan 47 where does that come from it actually regener it actually came from i play a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh, and there's a deck called sylvans and i feel like it's somewhat similar to how my name if you rearrange my first and last name it sounds somewhat similar to it so that's why i went with sylvan Okay, I have a question for you. We're going to go into Yu-Gi-Oh! because you just blew my <laughs> mind, okay? Now, I'm a, I was born in 1998, okay? So I was born, like, during peak Yu-Gi-Oh! era, like, before it got ridiculous with all of the rules, pendulum summoning. Like, I don't even understand <laughs> what that even means, right? So I have to ask you, what was your favorite timeline of Yu-Gi-Oh! Like, the original series going into that? Like, what, what kind of card generation did you enjoy the most? Let's talk about that for a second. I'm going to be honest, when I started playing Yu-Gi-Oh!, I think I was, like, at the time, seven. And I would just play with, like, whatever cards I had, because I mainly got them, like, secondhand from cousins and all that. But then as time went on, as I entered high school, I realized there's a competitive version of it. So, talking about Yu-Gi-Oh! for a second, um, I was very into it back in the day, born 1998, peak Yu-Gi-Oh! time. Um, out of curiosity, like, what generation of Yu-Gi-Oh! did you end up enjoying the most during your time playing it? Um, I'm going to say a little bit into high school, because that's when I found out they have a very competitive state, and me just having a random deck of cards, I found out from friends, like, oh yeah, they have other variants, they have, like, archetypes, strategies, and like, oh, okay, let me see how I could get into this. My friend introduced me by giving me a deck called Lavavals, basically sacrificing fire types to get abilities going off and all that stuff. And when I entered, I think it was like the era of XCs, oh. where it's like overlaying monsters, detaching materials. Luckily, they gave me the deck where it had like an XC monster before it got banned. And I just learned from there. Eventually, I evolved to have like different variations of the deck. And I have to say, I really like it a lot because this is when I really got serious into it. Was during the, what was it? The Link summoning era. Ugh, yeah. Reason being... <laughs> The reason being is because I finally had like an actual deck that I felt comfortable with. And that's when I started to really like, hyper focus on it. I didn't ever win tournaments, but I got at least like fifth place to like within the top five. So you have like a tournament history in Yu-Gi-Oh! You took it like semi-seriously then. Semi-seriously. It's just like I didn't go into like any regionals or anything like that. Just mainly like shop tournaments. That, I'm so jealous. I never got to do any of that growing up. I was not rich enough. I did not know where it was going. Nobody would ever drive me to that. That is that is a really fortunate situation to have. Going into Toontown now, you know, we're, okay. we're, we're, we're both Toontown streamers here. It's the primary game that you and I both play. So let me ask you, when did you first start playing Toontown? I first started getting into Toontown, I think, a few years after it dropped via Disney. 
when it's like you don't have to get like the little box to play it anymore. It's like already just get the membership, download it, you can play it. And I think during that time when I started playing it, I was like always on and off because my family was like, oh, you don't need it. You don't need a membership. You don't need to play. It's like, okay, yeah. So I was constantly on and off. Eventually, once the servers went down, I just never touched the game again. And then when I realized TTR was a thing, I said like, you know what? Let's go ahead and start playing it. I think that was like several years back. And I think I only got my rabbit up to, like at the time, my rabbit that I currently have, I got him up to, I think, 55 laugh, and that's why I just stopped. Until I started replaying it, streaming it, and all that good stuff. I think, like again, near the end of December last year, or near November, December last year. Okay, interesting. So, keeping in mind your experiences both as a kid and now as an adult, what is your favorite memory from playing Toontown? If I have to remember, it was during the time when me, when I was younger, me and my fam, me, me and my cousins, we were all obsessed with Toontown, and we all like join in via LAN because some of us had laptops. So when we went to a cousin's house, we would all, some of us, bring our own laptops and just play together in that room, where the computer room was or whatever, and we'll just all play Toontown together as a group. I think at the time it was like formatting like back, uh, facilities and all that stuff. It was just one of my happiest memories from those. I'm sorry, you're going to have to educate me for a second. You said playing Toontown on land. Was there a way to play it offline, or are you just more meanly you guys are playing online but together I in the mean, same room? I'm, yeah, that's what I mean by land. It's like, it's online play still, but we're just still together via laptops and all that version. That sounds like one of the best experiences anybody could ever have playing any video game. Because, like, I grew up in an era where, like, the internet had, like, fully solidified online gaming. A lot of the games that I would play... I, w- I would do on land like the original Halo one like I was there was I wasn't playing like an Xbox Live variant of that like I was playing with friends in person, and I really feel like that's the most pure way to enjoy a video game. Um, so you've played Toontown for a while now. Um, you, you've accumulated a lot of hours into the game. If you could wave a magic wand and add one feature to either or both versions of the the major Toontown games right now, what feature would you add? I'm to be honest, I. Myself, I don't want to add features. I want them to evolve via community. Because if I add something, there's again, there'll be something someone else might not like about the game. I'd rather have the, the developers just continue on what they have. And if it does make a big improvement, great. If it doesn't, of course, we'll complain about it. But they'll eventually change it over time. Do you feel like there's anything they could currently polish to make it a better community experience? For overall polish, I feel... Um, I'm going to be honest, i really not entirely sure. When it comes to situations like that, I don't really dig too deep into it. Unless it's mandatory, but at the moment, I don't really see anything that they could change. So far, like, the community is really big as it is. Because people are re- going back to it for nostalgia reasons, or just to just try something new. That's why Corporate Clash is also a thing. People like Co- Toontown, but they want something a bit more challenging going back and forth between the two you see there is a big difference between the two yeah you could say that. honestly (laughs) but honestly that's great just having some changes sure ttr could eventually borrow something or like not even put into implementation implementation implement it but it's honestly interesting seeing how far they've gotten from when it was cut off originally from when disney cut it off Oh, yeah, I mean, it's crazy how much development, especially considering they're not allowed to get paid during it. Like, the amount of time donated and energy expended to make them what they are today is really admirable. And I'm very thankful to be kind of riding that wave so many years later, because I've I've only got into this recently. Um, The amount of work that's been done before I've arrived has been really admirable. I've really respected the teams as a whole for that, despite the faults that I've noticed along the way. So taking it to, like, a more light topic then, you know, there are... Only so many gag tracks out there. Of all those <laughs> gag tracks, including the zap from TTCC, what's your favorite gag track and why? Oh. If I'm gonna be honest, I'm gonna have to say zap. Don't get me wrong, every other gag has their own animation and it's great. However, since the introduction introduction to zap is like a whole new feel to the game. Especially once you get to like level five gags of Zap, where you automatically just disintegrate them. They just don't die anymore from, apparently from laughter, from what I saw. They just disintegrate just because they got immune to it. The first time that I saw Zap was probably my second or third stream in. And whenever I saw that disintegration animation, I was just absolutely (laughs) blown away. 
Um, I discussed this in a different interview that I did, but I think I agree with you that Zap's probably my favorite, which, you know, I feel like if you've been in the game for a long time, seeing anything new and as well-developed as Zap was will definitely awestruck you to a certain degree, especially considering what we've seen in the past from TTO. So you've had experiences now playing TTR and TTCC. If from this point onwards, you had to choose just one of those two versions to play in Toontown for the rest of your time playing, which one would you choose and why? If I had to choose one, if anything, I might have to stick with Corporate Clash. The reason being is just because since it's so different and with the recent event that just happened with the board bots and changing every single design and making them look a little bit better, um, I know for a fact that they're going to change everything else from Cash Bot uh, and Cell Bot and Boss Bot eventually. So seeing the new designs is something I'm really looking forward to. And eventually, if, even if they do, changing how the bosses work, because they changed the CJ before to a CLO. And that's a whole different field from the actual game. And it's great. It's a whole new experience for anyone just joining for the first time. And honestly, I'm really looking forward to what the changes they could lead to eventually. Taking a quick step away from Toontown and talking more about streaming as a whole. If you were given the opportunity to stream as your job, you know, making enough money to live comfortably, maybe not being like a multimillionaire, but like you're making like the average amount for wherever you're at in the world. Would you take that opportunity even if it meant working way more than 40 hours a week? Or is this more of just a pure hobby for you? I want to be honest, I would probably put it in more effort to like put in more hours. The reason being is because something happened in my life that made, that made me change a lot of things in my life. I used to work a constant eight hour shift but something led me to for, not forcibly quit, but I had to quit my job because of it. And then I, had to, I couldn't do anything for almost like several months. I was in and out of hospital. Sometimes I would stay in hospital months on end. And eventually when I finally got better, I was able to sit at my computer for long periods of time or longer periods of time. I was like, you know what? I have the streaming services. My computer can stream whatever I have on my screen. Why not try it out again? You have it. You have an account. Continue it. And I feel like if I could, I would honestly put in more hours, more effort just to stream a bit more. Because I want to get back. Sure, I'm looking for a job now, but honestly, I just like doing this. Sure, I could go back, but I kind of want to just start, start continuing more, talk to more people. It's always fun talking to more people and getting to know more people. I, like, I met you, I met Jester, I met uh, Favor, uh, what was it, uh, Jardivar. Everyone's so nice and amazing, and I wouldn't change it for any other thing. There is not a single negative interaction that I've had with any Toontown streamer up to this point. And I've been in the community now for two months. Very like, I've been very present in the community for that full two months. Everyone seems so inviting and kind. Everybody's raiding each other. Um, people are shouting each other out, going to th each other's chats and hanging out. Like it's a, it's a really tight knit community. I'm very thankful to also be a part of it. I completely agree with you. It actually segues very nicely into the next question. And this is going to require you to pick a favorite here, okay? So, okay. of all the Toontown streamers you're aware of, there's quite a few of them out there, whose content do you feel like is the most engaging with their communities? I'm not saying the best content. I'm not, I'm not saying the biggest community. But whose content do you feel like keeps is their... Is engaging. Is the most engaging? Um, if I had to choose the one who's most engaged, it had to be Ellie Cat. As well as Danny. Those two have very, very good interactions. Granted, Ellie does a lot more interactions with streamers from what I've seen. Or with their viewers. But it's also... Danny has been with recent games like Lethal Company, Phasmophobia. Pulling in the community, their own community together just to play several different games. is just great. And it's just so energetic and new to me. Because I've seen streamers interact with their own community. But... Once they get too big, eventually they can't do that as, anymore as often as they want to. So seeing those two now, even though they have a good amount of viewers or followers, it's just so nice to see, see them uh, have viewers join in for their community. If you had to pick one over the other, because I agree with you, that those two are probably about the top of their game right now. Who, who would you eke out in the first place? I have to give it to Ellie, honestly. I, have, I really have to give it to Ellie. I really do feel like Ellie, honestly, is the queen of Toontown at this very moment. Very aggressively growing. I could see them becoming partner at some point during this year. 
Um, like the most positive person I've probably seen in all of the community up to this point. I, I would probably agree with you on that for sure. Going into the negative for a second, talking about Toontown, you know, you've played for years now, you know quite a bit about it. You probably had some irks here and there. What is your least favorite thing about Toontown? Does it matter from when I played it? or Not at all. The introduction to level one, two, one, two, three star SOS cards when they drop the field offices originally with the moving shakers. Okay. Because honestly, they were not needed, like at all. Sure, you get like a t- minor tune up, minor lure, whatever. But overall, in the later games, there's like, there's no point in using them. So why even have it? And honestly, that was like the nitpick for me to even exist. Sure, you could get those without even doing VPs anymore. But is it really worth it? <laughs> That's fair enough. Um, what is your favorite thing? to do in Toontown and why? Honestly, just... Um, when it comes to Corporate Clash, I tend to, like, just exist and walk around the playgrounds. I don't know what I'm doing. Sure, I'm, like, watching a video or doing whatever, but just sometimes just wandering around in the playground, just circling around the big tree in Acorn Acres for Corporate Clash, or just wandering, like, the streets of Toontown in, like, TTR, just for the fun of it. Like, sure, I have tasks to do, but I want to just go walk from A to B really quick just to see how it is. You know, kind of expanding off of that, I haven't thought about this much, but, like, if somebody made a version of Toontown that was significantly more, like, open-world concept, how quickly would you be jumping on a game like that? I might hop into it just to see how it is. Because, sure, even if it's open-world, it might be fun at first, but if it just doesn't really pull me in, I probably won't stay for that long. But I would try to test it out to see if I really do like it. Taking a look outside of everything we've been talking about, you know, Twitch, Toontown, etc. What do you fill your time and days with whenever you're not live streaming? Can you, can you like elaborate a bit more? I'm like a bit lost. Yeah, of, of course. So, you know, you and I are both streamers of Toontown, right? We spend a, a not insignificant amount of time live and engaging with the communities, but everybody that goes live has something else going on in their lives. So like, what do you do throughout, throughout your week whenever you're not live streaming? Uh, most of the time, for me, my schedule is kind of consistent. That's why I try to like set a schedule for when I stream. Usually it's in the morning, during the weekdays, and during, during the weekends. I try to like go in the afternoon. It's just because when I'm at home, it's just me, my parents, and my nieces. And basically, I'm like a person who has to take my niece to school. Then I have to pick them up after school. My parents work, so that way they could help support. And my, nie- my other niece goes to daycare, so I have to constantly like keep an eye on everything. When it comes to like near the end of the day, after I finish streaming, I have my lunch, go pick them up, come back, and then help them with homework, help out with a lot of things. That's why I tend to like not stream in the afternoon. It's very busy. And then when it comes in the weekends, in the mornings, I have to like just basically assist with the kids. That's all. Okay, fair. I mean, that, listen, I deeply respect people who are that family oriented. I wish I could be more. If I hadn't had to move states for my job, I would be with them right now. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to ask, um, in the course of this conversation, I've noticed the fact that you are, at the very bare minimum, bilingual. Were you raised bilingual, or did you learn one language later on in life? Tell me the story behind that. Um, <laughs> it's actually kind of funny. My family, growing up, it was just me, my mom, my dad, and my sister. And my parents, I think, were already in the States for, I think, about 10 years now? Oh no, like for about three years at the time. So they were practicing their English, all that good stuff. So when I was born, apparently they said to themselves and their family, it's like, okay, we're going to raise this child English. We're not going to speak Spanish in front of him. We're going to practice our English. So I didn't even learn Spanish until I entered middle school when I was in like an elective choice. Like whenever it's harder to learn Spanish. (laughs) The funny part is I understood Spanish. The thing is, I cannot speak it. If I spoke it, it will be very broken, very Banglish in some sorts. So, yeah, that's that's how it is for me learning Spanish. Lo siento, mi amigo. Yo soy mucho uh, mendejo. Tú eres mucho inteligente. <laughs> Tú necesitas más uh, español, mi amigo. I don't think like very, very broken Spanish. But I, I deeply respect people who, like, at least make the effort to learn a second language. Like, language is how we bridge gaps 
and like culture and worldviews. Um, so as soon as I heard you start speaking, I was like, dang, my respect just went from like here to like way up here. You can't even see it anymore. That's really cool. Especially because you had to learn it later. Because, you know, the first like four or five years of our lives, like a lot of that gets kind of like absorbed into our tiny little mushy brains, you know? So like you, you really put in work to do that. I, re- I really love that a lot. So yeah, I learned a lot more Spanish during also like when I was working at a nursing home when I had my CNA license. I tend to like speak more Spanish because I had a lot of residents who are Spanish speakers and it just helped me communicate with them a bit more. So interesting. So like if you were if you were like unable to speak English for a week, would you be able to get by with your current knowledge of Spanish, like being able to talk to people, or would it would there be a lot of gaps in your ability to communicate? There would be a good amount of gaps, but I might be able to get some of what I'm saying across. Sure, they might look tired of me trying to speak it, but it's one way or another, I'm still gonna learn it. Okay. So you asked me a question before we went live, live, recording, whatever. I'm so used to streaming, this is ridiculous. But you asked me the question that I'm now going to reverse right back on to you. I'm going to Uno reverse you so hard here. Why did you start streaming? Um, Originally, like you saw in the records before, I went on and off because me and my friends, I think it was just at the time we started, like, we were about, we just entered college, we had the free time. It's like, you know what, let's just stream here and there. Uh, the first game I actually streamed was Cuphead. And we said, like, let's do this for fun. We have the free time. None of we were working. We have college. Just have some free time with it. But then, as it progressed, I got really busy with school, work. Eventually, I had to drop out of school to help pull in more hours to get more money to help out with the family. And eventually, when I got hospitalized and came back home after a while, I realized I have free time instead of just sitting here just playing games or doing nothing. I might as well just stream and talk to people. Why not? I like talking to people. I like to interact and. It just grew from there, from October and onward from November, December, get, just growing the community from there. And honestly, that's how I just started more and more focusing on streaming. Out of curiosity, what were you going to college for? Originally, I, was, I went for accounting, but then I realized it just didn't line up properly with what I wanted to. And at the time, before even going to college, my parents signed me up for a CNA course, or like a five-week CNA course. Once I started working while going to college, during my accounting classes, I realized I, ha- I enjoy helping people a little bit more. So I looked into like nursing programs, whatever they have, and I wanted to be a respiratory therapist. I realized that's something I want to do. I want to take classes for that. I wanted to be a respiratory therapist, and that's what I went to study for. So you're telling me that you found more meaning in life, helping others with their health rather than staring at account letters all day? Yes. I, I couldn't have possibly imagined it. Um, in the course of getting my business degree, I had to take three accounting classes and several finance classes, and it made me just like the most miserable I've ever been. I could never even consider being an accountant. There's just no way. <laughs> so I have to ask. Honestly, I, yeah. No, go, please go ahead. Yeah. Honestly, like at first, I was just really good. I was good at numbers to a certain degree. I didn't excel at it. I didn't like think I was like a greatest at it, but I, I, ex- I was decent at it. So I was like, accounting, why not? Until I started working at the nursing home. Then I realized, can I expand on this? And Please. that's where it yeah. led me to. Interesting. I've been noticing in your background, there is a My Hero Academia <laughs> poster on that wall. So I have to ask you, first and foremost, what's your favorite anime? Uh... If I remember correctly, I remember watching this anime very, very far back. I don't know why I started watching it, but it existed. And I chose, like, Bo- uh, Boku no Test, I think. And please do not not assume it's, like, the other thing. No. No, I would, nobody <laughs> thinks it's, it's that. Like... <laughs> <laughs> but it's basically an academy where they have their grade scores reflect in their ability with their little summon spirits. And apparently, whatever their grade score is, the stronger their summoning spirit is. And they just combat with each other. And if you succeed against another class in either test scores or in combat, you're either able to take something from them or, get, or you lose something to them. And that's your favorite anime to date? It's my favorite to this date. It's just because it's out of left field when I found it. And it's just like a very vivid memory in my head. I have never heard of this. I'm going to have to look it up now after this talk. I'm, I'm very curious about what this would entail. Okay. Now, no, not Boku no Test. It's Baka no Test. Okay. Got it. Yeah, no, I was, I was trying to remember. Just, I remember it started with a B and it has no test in it. That's all. Okay. Your mask. 
first of all, two things. One, why the mask? Like in sh- like right now, or yeah. just in general? In in general, why the mask? I went to Universal with my friend, and he's like, "Oh, hey, they have this." I took it with me. <laughs> I paid for it, of course, of but course. <laughs> I took it with me. Are you a Harry Potter fan? Very. Okay, you say very. Let's ooh, be careful here. I've read through the series probably close to a dozen times now. What's your favorite By book? Very, if I have to go with my book, it's going to be, what was it? Prisoner of Azkaban. So you are a big fan of the third book in the series. Let me ask why. Yes. Honestly, it just led to the situation where like Harry learned that nothing is as it seems a lot harder um, fa- from family reasons that he thought a family was murder a family member eventually was a murderer to end up being falsely accused and then also finding out that the rat that Ron had for like the two books before that to only be uh, what was it an animagus yes and honestly that was just a really good twist that I did not expect when I read the book nor watching the movie so I was like wow I did not see that coming Whenever I go back and reread the series, which I do about every like year or two nowadays, I tend to skip the first two books. Because the first book is just world building. It's very slow paced. Not a lot of like highlights of magic at all, right? And in book two, there are a few more examples, but again, like I feel like J.K. Rowling was still kind of catching their stride and they were definitely building up. And I feel like kinda like what you mentioned, like book three pays off a lot of foreshadowing. It kind of introduces a lot more magic into the series. Um, The characters become more compelling and interesting. So when I say I've read the series 12 times, like the first two books, I've read like five or six times. But the the, the three onwards, those are the ones that I've gotten really into over the years, especially. Um, Interesting. I love that. So why do you, I'm assuming at least, identify as a Hufflepuff? I'm just not entirely sure. I feel like just looking through like how Ravenclaws are Slytherin as well as just Gryffindors, they each have like something specific. And no, I'm not referring to Slytherins being evil. It's just like a whole different thing. But it's just the personalities and how they are as a person just doesn't really align to how I am as a person. And I feel like Hufflepuff relates to me more via either kindness, sometimes eating a bit too much or just anything like that. I just feel like I resonate more with Hufflepuff. Out of curiosity, if you had to place me in one of the four houses, because I, I know what I am, I've taken the test, where would you put me at? Ravenclaw. Why? I feel like just from like how studious you were, as from what you told me, how studious you were, to get into like your accounting and all that stuff, honestly, you just feel like a very studious person. However, you're also more of a serious type. Sure, you can have fun here and there. But you have more of like a serious personality to yourself. So you've unfortunately met me at a weird point in my life where I've been a general manager now for like nine months. I have a lot of responsibility, like make sure people have jobs. It's kind of, it's kind of a big deal for me. <laughs> um, I, every time I have tested like the official test, I have always and probably forever will place in Gryffindor. Um, okay. The, the, the serious side of me is the, the weight of responsibility of leadership and literally nothing else. I used to be significantly more carefree prior to this position. Um, I feel like, I feel like the issue with me being Ravenclaw is that I don't, I've never taken the studies seriously personally, mm. right? Like I've, I've never cared about grades. It's never been a priority of mine. I, I enjoy the pursuit of knowledge. Sure. But not the utilization, rather just the collection of it. And I feel like someone in Ravenclaw would care more about the application of knowledge rather than just the pursuit of it, in my opinion, based on my interpretation of the characters that I've seen thus far. Okay. So I I took a look at your YouTube channel. Okay. Listen, listen, there's a lot of things that goes on to that. I could explain so much about that. By all means, stop it from asking the question. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) No, I assume the question, I'll let you finish what you're going to ask, and yeah, I'll continue on from there. Upload frequency and type of content. Go. Why? <laughs> <laughs> uh, before before I even started Twitch, me and my friends, like I said, me and my friends did Twitch here and there when we were playing games. Originally, I had an Elgato and I had an Xbox, and Cuphead was hot at the time. It was like the big thing that dropped. We realized, you know what? If streaming doesn't work as often because we had issues with the Elgato and my computer before, it was like, you know what, let's record it on your computer, just edit it, and just upload it. 
the videos are now private because they're cringe. <laughs> and um, we realized I just private it before I added anything else. I wanted to originally make the channel now like a secondary VOD for reason being Twitch deleting videos, mainly for Kingdom Hearts, because that was a game I started playing more because I was gifted by a friend. And I realized this game, I want to keep it a little bit longer than on Twitch VODs. I want to stream both on YouTube and on Twitch. So that way I could have them like coincide and have like two different VOD channels. The problem with that is I made a mistake by having a thumbnail already in it. So in order for me to remove it is via going into like the side where you open up the side and it has a code and all that. I apparently have to delete a certain code to remove the thumbnail if I want to stream like any other game. Otherwise, I have to make a thumbnail. I haven't done it yet, just been too lazy, <laughs> and that's kind of the reason why I have it up. It exists! I have older videos, I just have them private. Are you aware of other Toontown streamers that do multi-streaming? Because to the best of my knowledge, every like major Toontown streamer on Twitch only streams on Twitch. Not that I'm aware of. I heard I have known people to multi-stream, but not really Toontown. I wonder what kind of market you could reach if you did that. I wonder if there's actually demand for that on sites like YouTube or and I've heard this. Apparently in TikTok, you can also live stream, which is just absolutely wild to me, thinking about how the short form content works there. Um, that could, that, I would love to watch that. Yeah. It's interesting. I've seen like a lot of people who are like streaming on TikTok and like it's kind of weird just because you have to have it in a weird layout for your stream in order for it to work properly, but it surprisingly works for some people. So interesting. To this point, what has been the most enjoyable part about hitting that go live button for you? Like what keeps you coming back over and over again? Honestly, just interacting with everyone that's been following or just people who just join in. Sure, if they don't follow, that's up to them. I don't really, I don't really mind, don't really care. I'm here to exist just so that way they could vibe. My place is a safe place. If you had a stressful day at work, come in. If you want to say hi, sure, say hi. That's why also why I have a goodbye and hello button where you can redeem for five points. If you don't want to talk, but you still want to say hi, redeem it. Five points. That's it. Nothing else, nothing more. There is this pattern that I've noticed in your Twitch chat where some individuals will clip you saying sometimes ambiguously compromising things out of curiosity why do you think that started and in your honest opinion do you think it's funny whenever people clip you a little bit out of context um i kind of know where this started originally i would say a lot of things that are out of left field just because i said it wrong or pronounced it wrong where apparently there was a there was a phrase where we're talking about uh what was it Buttermilk pancakes. I ended up accidentally saying nutter milk pancakes. And the person wrote it down. It's like, you know what? You're here often. Just write down a list. And he gave me a list. And it exists. I have it in my file. <laughs> and I real and then we got another follower. And I said something out of context. He happened to be there during that stream. He said, you know what? This will be funny out of context. And to proceed to record it. And then I realized... This is funny. It's going to happen often. I'm going to let it slide. I'm just going to let it be. <laughs> let it exist in the world. I want to peel back the curtain for a second. One of the main reasons why I initially started coming back to your streams, I think it might have been the first or maybe second stream that I watched of yours. There was a viewer who shared a clip from you playing Kingdom Hearts. Oh, God. And it's a scene that involved the Little Mermaid. And there was oh, a line yeah. in this clip that, and I just lost my mind. Do you know, <laughs> do you know what clip I'm talking about? There's two, and I'm not sure which one you're referring to. I'll, I'll give Is you a the... hint. Daddy, no. <laughs> <laughs> and from that day onwards, I became a true Sylvan fan. And I am now a moderator somehow, for some reason, in your chat. <laughs> I thought you were referring to the one I was like, Daddy, I'm so sorry. No, it's Daddy, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Interesting. Alrighty. Well, my only other question that I have for you, before we went live, recording, whatever, who cares? You mentioned <laughs> bandanas. I'm, I'm just curious, can you expand on bandanas for me? I see that you're wearing one now. <laughs> um, Before 
I even decided, like, oh, I will show my face eventually. I realized I kind of like how the bandana looks and, like, how variety of styles they are. I decided to pick a few up when me and my family went out to the, to the swap meet. I think I have, like, four in total right now. Like, a four different colors. And then I also realized... I realized my tune is wearing a bandana in Corporate Clash. Why not try to implement it if the webcam ever turns on? I have a look. Just something that exists. That way, people could associate me with something. And... That's something they could look forward to, I guess, if they ever redeem it. I guess that's about it. So if anyone ever wants to cosplay as Sylvan 47, they need only to wear a bandana around their neck. I love Basically. That. Before we ended off, did you have any questions or anything you wanted to discuss beforehand? If I'm going to be honest, not really. You did answer my question off stream. And honestly, that was the only thing that really piqued my interest, like how you started and all that stuff. And you honestly answered it really to what i was expecting well not expecting but it was a good answer that i was really appreciative about truly the interviewer became the interviewee well (laughs) if there's nothing else i'm gonna go ahead and send that outro everybody thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed if you did go ahead and give it a like if you want to see more subscribe sylvan do you have anything you'd like to shout out before we end just have a good day honestly and basically you're not alone that's all you really gotta say Thank you again for having me here, Schedule. Absolutely. Or Chris, I'm so- How dare you? And above all else, do not forget to keep it casual. <laughs>